Amen. What a mighty God we do serve this morning. I want to turn your attention to Matthew chapter 12, beginning in verse 43. Matthew chapter 12, beginning in verse 43. Let me tell you, you hear a lot about haunted houses this time of the year. And sadly, there's many people that are living in a haunted house this morning. They're living bound by the bondages of sin, by the bondages of Satan, being haunted uh, by the things of the devil this morning. I want you to know this morning that the Lord is here to shine the light of the gospel. There's a light that still shines in this dark world this morning, and his name is Jesus. How many know this world is dark this morning? This world is wicked. This world is evil, but there's still a light uh, that can shine in the dark houses, and his name is Jesus Christ. Let's listen to the word the, uh, the, right here in Matthew 12, beginning in verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he says, I will return from the house whence I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty and garnished. Then he goes, he... And takes with himself seven other spirits more wicked than in himself. They enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Did you see that? The last state is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. I want to speak to you on the thought of living in a haunted house this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God, and we praise you, dear Lord, and we ask you, Lord, for your anointing, dear God, in here this day. Father, today I pray, Lord, for you to just help me, dear God, to speak your words. Anoint my lips to speak your words, dear Father, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, for your divine anointing in here, Lord. Uh, and I pray, Father God, Lord, that you just give me the words to say, Lord, that you'll just search every life and heart and individual in here, Father, Lord. And we give you the glory, dear God, the praise and the honor in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, in this text right here, we see that a man uh, had an evil spirit came out of him and he left himself open and that spirit had no rest but could not find and the evil spirit would say to himself I will return to the house that I left the house was empty the individual did not fill the house and instead left it wide open so not only did that one spirit come back into it but seven more more evil and that became a hold of this empty house and the Bible says the latter state is worse than the first state of mankind and I begin to think about this message how many people are living bound up by the power of sin how many people are being chained by the bondages of sin this morning and don't even know the state they are living in. They are living in a haunted house this morning. It is a house that is without light. Simply means they cannot see the error of their way. They'll try, people try to justify actions all day long, but until the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shines in their life, they cannot see the error of their way. In fact, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believed not. People are bound by the, by the God of this world. The lowercase g. Old Satan himself, that old evil serpent is blinding people to them and going to chaining them, torturing them, making their life a misery. They can can't see the error this way because they're blinded uh, by Satan himself. Uh, there'll be people today we see, we look around in the world uh, and you'll see how people try to justify uh, all the actions of the sinful world. Uh, but can I tell you this morning uh, if the word of God calls it wrong, it's still wrong this morning. Uh, people can chase and put any kind of justification on anything they want to put. Uh, but if the 
Bible calls it sin, guess what? It's still sin this morning. If the Bible says a man must be born again, then a man must be born again. Amen? If the Bible says all men must come to repentance, he don't wink at ignorance. That means that he's still commanding repentance this morning. But old Satan this morning has got many people blinded up to believe a lie. He's got many people blinded up to falling into his little trap. People are dying and going to hell by the minute because they're blinded by the glo- blinded by the God of this world. But listen, what I'm telling you, people are walking in darkness this morning. People are walking in darkness. Let me tell you that darkness has blinded the eyes of man. Can I tell you anyone who is not born again is walking in darkness. Did you hear me? When you're not saved, you're walking in darkness. Amen? When the blood of Jesus Christ is not covering you, you're walking in darkness. Can I tell you the day that mankind is in one of two camps? It's in the camp of the Lord or it's in the camp of the devil. There's no in between. There's no fence to straddle. One is either born again and got their name and written in the Lamb's book of life or there's one that's walk, they're walking in darkness and they're bound living in bondage to the hounds of hell. But I got good news for you. There's still a light that shines in the midst of darkness. There's still some blood that's able to set a man free. There's still a lighthouse that's shining in this dark world. There's still an answer for the cure of sin. The answer is to be born again. Amen. John, we'll get there here in just a minute. But people don't realize how dark this world really is. People don't realize how dark it really is. Do you know they'll kill you then look at you. We just, the world is just the fine sin. It's called Planned Parenthood. Amen. Let me get this one since we're dedicating a baby. It's not a tissue. It's a baby in there. Amen. We look around. People want to justify all they do because they can't properly see. Everybody said they don't see a problem. The things that's going on. Well, you ain't got a biblical worldview. When you get a biblical worldview, you'll see through the eyes of Christ. But until one gets a biblical worldview, let me tell you, they're going to be blinded by the God of this world. Is anybody awake on me in here this morning? Uh, can I tell you, if light is not occur- occupying the house, that means uh, there's darkness that's in there. People are living in a haunted house. Uh, they're living chained up. Uh, they're living bound by the hounds of hell. Uh, but I got news for you, uh, that Jesus Christ can break the chains of sin. Uh, he can break the yoke. Uh, he can break the bondages. Uh, he can set a man free. Uh, a man Man don't have to live in miserable. Can I tell you why mankind's so miserable? You ever met somebody that's just so miserable? You just want to say, oh, get the lemon out of your mouth. Anybody want to know that? Anybody ever met somebody that was literally so miserable you couldn't get them to smile or crack anything? And I was, they was just literally miserable. You know, their whole life they were just crumble. Well, I'm telling you right now, God tell you people in sin are in misery this morning. But I got you news one. I tell you, there's one that can turn the misery into joy this morning. There's one that can turn the hopelessness into hope this morning. There's one that can break the chains that shackling the individual. Can I tell you his name is Jesus. You don't have to live in a haunted house this morning. You don't have to live bound up with devils in your life. You don't have to live in the chains of darkness. Can I tell you that God can down to our level. Amen. Can I tell you, he went to a cross. We're not willing that one should perish, but that all come to repentance this morning. Can I tell you, there's been a sacrifice paid. Can I tell you, the penalty of sin has been paid for those who will accept him this morning. He did it at the cross where mankind don't have to live. Bound up by the body 
bondages of sin. Can I tell you, you can be free this morning. You don't have to live in darkness, but you can live in the light of the gospel this morning. I'm telling you, you see people, everyone will serve one or two masters. Amen? Everyone will serve one or two. You'll either serve darkness or you'll serve light. And and it goes back to where Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, verse 3. Nicodemus came to him, and Nicodemus asked the question, what must must a man do to inherit eternal life? Jesus' response was, a man must be born again. Amen. Amen. Nicodemus got it through his mind. How can I go through my mother's womb? That ain't what Jesus was talking about. You must be born of the Spirit and of the water. Amen. Amen. That means you've got to come to repentance. You've got to come to a change of nature. Can I tell you this morning that he's still setting people free? But let me tell you, people love darkness rather than light this morning. Can I tell you why people reject Jesus? It's because they love their darkness rather than light. In John 3 and 19 and 20, and this is the condemnation. The light is come into the world, and men love darkness darkness rather than light and men love darkness that rather than that light because their deeds were evil for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light at least his deeds should be reproved can I tell you why they don't want to hear about Jesus of the Bible because Jesus of the Bible will convict somebody can I tell you they don't want they don't want to hear Jesus of the Bible because his light shines in their dark lives mankind loves evil deeds but I've come by to tell you uh, the evilness of this world is on a collision course uh, with the judgment of the Lamb of God. Amen? Uh, Can I tell you the evilness of this world uh, is on a collision course uh, with the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords? Uh, Can I tell you today uh, that one day uh, he's going to set this world in order? Uh, Can I tell you one day uh, sin is going to be abolished? Uh, Can I tell you one day uh, then I tell you one day that every man in here, everybody under my voice and around the world is going to have to stand before him. And it is as it is written, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can I tell you, you will either bow to him now and confess him as Lord or you'll stand before his throne and bow then when it is too late. But I don't know about you, but I'm going to bow to him right now. Amen. And there's nothing in this old dark world that I want. Can I tell you what the sin of this world will give you? It will give you heartache. It will give you misery. It will give you pain. It will imprison you. It will make you a slave. It will shackle you. But can I tell you what Jesus will give you? He will give you joy. He will give you light. He will give you victory. He will set you free. Somebody in here needs to say, just give me Jesus this morning. Just give me the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't need what this world's got. All I need is Jesus. I don't need what this world's got for me. All the things of this world is temporary. The pleasures of sin last for a season. And after that, you meet God. Amen? Amen. People don't get that. They think they, got every, they think they got plenty of time. I'm here, to st- I'm here to rattle your cage this morning. If you don't know me, I like to rattle cages. That the power of sin. That every, I'm going to tell you. Here's the, here's the note. You don't have plenty of time. I don't care how young you are or how old you are. Taking that last breath ain't got nothing to do with your age. I've been in rooms with all ages. Amen. I've heard them say my body's on fire. Yeah. I'll tell you what's going on. They're, on, they're getting ready to enter into hell. 
I said, exactly. And I've heard them say that he's coming for me. And put their hands up. See, sin wants to destroy lives. People are in misery this morning because Satan has occupied. Darkness has got in their life. People are literally miserable people this morning. I tell you how to get a little joy. Get a touch of Jesus. He'll give you some joy. Amen. I tell you how to get your little smile on your face and a smile inside of you. Let him crack the yoke of that bondage of sin that's in that evil heart. Oh, did you? Yeah. I'll tell you how to be set free, get the shackles of sin broke. Let Jesus break those shackles of sin. Amen. People are living in haunted houses this morning and don't even realize it. I'm not talking about something Hollywood puts out. I'm talking about a reality. People that are bound up by the powers of hell this morning. Because let me tell you something. This ain't a playground what people think it is. This ain't a Hollywood imagination party that's going on. This is a reality for the battle of the soul this morning. And I'm telling you, people are in bondage. Those that are living in this, under the influence of Satan in his haunted house are, are bound by the powers of sin this morning. Let me tell you, John 8 and 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant servant of sin. What he was saying there, whosoever makes a lifestyle of it, you're in bondage of sin. Whoever controls you is who's got a hold of you this morning. I don't know about you, but I remember when the Lord broke these chains on this old boy's life. Let me just tell you about this mean church of God brat right here. Let me tell you about the meanest kid in the church that went about if he could torment people like I've told you before, if the preacher ever ever inspired a sermon, I thought I was the one that gave him the great influence for it. But if there was something going on around there, it was old me. There would be times I thought I'd, people would say, you're a devil. I would think my name was that at times. But let me tell you, there was one night when this old miserable boy, this old boy was with the chains of sin. He didn't want nothing to do with Christianity. He didn't want nothing to do with it. When mama told me I needed to come to church, I would drive my car to the parking lot and say I was here but now I'm gone but listen one night I went in and although there was something got a moving there was something begin to convict there was something that would get a hold of me and I'm telling you I ran to that altar down in Iron Station North Carolina and I'm telling you I put my well, as soon as I got down before I could get the words out the tears were flowing you could hear you could feel the bondage. You could feel the weight lift. You could feel the chains that were being broken. I went down a beggar that day, but I came out a billionaire because I had more money than anything the world had. I got a hold of a king. I got a hold of a Messiah. I got a hold of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, I'm no longer a servant to sin, but I'm a servant to the king. I'm a servant to the most high. See, Romans 6 and 20 tells us, for when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. You were, you were bad. You, could, you weren't in righteousness. When you're a servant to sin. See, when one's a slave, saved, slave to sin, they got a puppeteer that's pulling the string. I've heard people say about it many times. I didn't raise my child to go that way. I can't picture them doing this. Well, let me tell you something. When the blood ain't applied to your life, the house is open. And when, when the house ain't filled with the Holy Spirit of God, can I tell you, you're on a string for the master puppeteer. He pulls, he pulls the punches. He pulls the strings and makes people could be raised right. And all of a sudden they snap. Can I tell you, it's Satan that's pulling the strings. Satan grabbing a hold of them, doing the things they normally would not do. Can I tell you, it's Satan that is inspiring abortions today. 
Amen. I was reading this doctor, a thing about this doctor, and I thought, oh, my Lord, you're going to stand before him. He said he'll do it. He laughs about doing abortion. He said that's one more or less baby that we got. I thank God have mercy on people like that. I, I, I said they better be glad I ain't up there because I'd be throwing lightning balls and hell balls left and right. <laughs> thank God he's more merciful than I am. <laughs> but listen, that's the point. Sin will make you do things you normally would not do. I'm going to just say it right here. A drug addict don't start out wanting to be a drug addict. An alcoholic don't start out wanting to be an alcoholic. It don't. It starts out with one, then Satan draws them. And when Satan draws them, he gets them bound. Amen? He'll give you enough to get you bound till he got a hold of you. But let me tell you, there's a chain breaker this morning. Think about there's a chain breaker this morning. His name is Jesus. Uh, you see, I think about the story of Legion. Anybody remember where the man in Gadarean, he was bound by at least 12,000 or more Legion of Demons. That's what the number Legion, uh, it's a multitude, many of them. Uh, and all of us listen about him. Uh, the Bible tells us that no one could bind him. The Bible tells us no one can tame him. The Bible says day and night he would literally cut himself and he would cry out. He was an outcast. He, nobody wanted anything to do with him. They tried to chain him but he couldn't hold him. They tried to do everything but they couldn't break him. No doubt this man that was living right there in the, in, bound by these legion of devils was living living in a haunted house. His life was that of misery. Anybody believe that this morning? His, there was no hope in him. There was no joy in him. It was complete bondage this morning. Uh, but let me tell you, the, their systems could not work. The systems of man could not set a man free from the terrors that was wrecking havoc. I'm telling you, we got that today. We tried to set men free with 12 step, 10 steps programs. Can I tell you the programs ain't going to set a man free? There's only one that can set a man free, and it comes to the cross of Calvary. Can I tell you whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved? Amen. And whom the Son will set free will be free indeed. Can I tell you he's still breaking chains? This demonic right here in Gadaria who was bound, who no man could tame, who cut himself day and night and cried, was going to get a hold of someone that could. They was someone that was on his way to the graveyard. They was someone that was on his way to break them chains. They was someone that was on his way to set him free. And that man was Jesus. There's no other one that can set a man free but the name of Jesus. Jesus this morning. Uh, here comes his freedom uh, and darkness uh, from the slavery of sin. Uh, this man who was literally bound up uh, of, by legion, Jesus was coming to set him free. When no other man was walking there, here comes Jesus. Can I tell you he'll come to where you're at? Did you hear me? This man had an appointment. If he's got an appointment with you, he's going to keep his appointment and he's going to be right on time. No man, and Jesus knew about this Gadarene. It come time for this Gadarene who was bound in slavery of sin and the bondages of destruction. I'm telling you, it, was, it would be a pitiful sight. I've seen people demon-possessed before. I've literally watched them levitate off the ground. You say, you're crazy. You, you ain't been in it long enough. You don't even know what you're talking about. I've seen it before with my own eyes. I've watched them come out. I've heard them growl. The name they cannot stand is the name Jesus. Amen? It's a reality. People are bound by that. People are under bondage to this system. But there's one that can pass by. He can set the vilest free this morning. He can set the miserable free. Set the one that's chained up in sin. The one that's hopeless and give them hope this morning. 
See, the world may what write people off. I've heard people say, oh, there ain't no hope. And there's probably been people said that about me before I was saved. There ain't no hope for that. Oh, it ain't gonna, but they don't know the Jesus that I know. Can I tell you, I don't care how far in sin they are. If it's time for him to get a hold of them, they're going to be changed. Amen. He can make the vilest sinner free this morning. Can I tell you something about the Bible? The Bible will give the lowdown on the people that God uses. It tells us what Abraham did. It tells us what David did. It tells us what Paul saw who become Paul, the things it does. And you can go on and on, but it also tells us about the grace of God this morning. How what they once does, he wiped it out and made them free. The one I think about is David. Anybody know the story of David this morning? Amen. How many know he was an adulterer? He was a murderer. He was a liar. And let me tell you, he had a he, he had a man killed, but let me tell you what something Jesus said about him. He said he was a man after his own heart. Why? Because soon as Nathan the prophet came to him, that king who failed the Lord so miserable was quick to repent and turn from his evil ways. Do you get what I'm telling you? Listen, when God gets a hold of them, he'll change a man. Amen? It don't matter where we've been, what we've done. It don't matter what we involved in. Just one touch of the master can make a difference. Just one drop of blood turns a life away. Amen? Just turns it around. Just one encounter with Jesus Christ can make the vilest sinner whole. Somebody needs in here may need a Damascus Road experience like Paul had. Can I tell you when Paul Saul had an encounter with Jesus on the Damascus Road, his life would never be the same. That's what it means to be born again. It means a life-changing experience experience right there. I don't walk like I once walked. I don't talk like I once talked. I've been changed by the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't live bound up in a haunted house. I live free in the light of the gospel of the glorious King of kings and Lord of lords. I've been transformed. I've been set free. I've got my name written in the Lamb's book of life. Can I tell you I've learned a long time ago don't worry about what other people think about you. Go right ahead. I like the critics because when the critics criticize, that means God's going to bless a little bit more. Amen? Did you hear what I'm telling you right there? What are you saying? I said, it don't really matter what man's got to say about us. All it matters is what a king's got to say. Amen? What it matters is what a king has got to say. I remember telling somebody one time, it really don't matter what you think. All it matters is what he He's got to say about it. I don't look, you don't have to look for the approval of a man. You just need to look for the approval of the king. Amen. But listen what I'm telling you. This man who was bound up by a legion of demons, he had an encounter. He, Jesus, was coming to him. And when Jesus came, these demons knew who was running at him. They knew their time was coming to an end. They knew they were getting ready to be set out. Ain't it something? Even the demons know who he is. Amen. They know that he is the authority. He is God. They know that he, can, when he speaks, they have no choice. And they said, oh, suffer us not to go over, but let us go into the pigs. And Jesus said, go into the pigs. And them pigs ran off that cliff right then and there, bound with those evil spirits inside of them. But here was a man who had been bound up who had been changed by legion of demons who cut himself day and night who lived in a haunted house who lived under the bondages of sin found himself going from darkness to light did you hear me he went from darkness living in darkness living among the grave living among the tombs but going into the light from being bound by the hounds of hell 
from being tormented by those evil spirits to being set free because Jesus passed through that day from having demons inside of him to having Jesus inside of him. Anybody get what I'm saying? Oh, what a difference it makes. Oh, what an experience he had that day. No longer bound up by the bondages of sin, by the hounds of hell. The king had come by the graveyard and set him free. Mark 5 and 20 tells us, and he departed. Listen, what happened to him? This demonic, this Gadarene who just got set free from a man who was a wild man, cut himself, cried day and night to be in torture. I imagine most people didn't want to go around him. Listen what happened to him after that in Mark 5 and 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapitus how great things how Jesus had done for them and all the men did marvel. What are you getting at, preacher? I'm telling you, he went from a prison to being an evangelist. Did you hear? He went telling somebody that Jesus had done, set him free. This is how you know somebody's had an encounter with Christ. Because when somebody has a true encounter with Christ, their life will never be the same. Did you hear me? You're going to see some type of change in their life. Amen? Amen? I remember times I see them go down on, in the altars. Remember a young man down in North Carolina went down in the altars bound on drugs and alcohol. God convicted him. When he got up, you couldn't tell a trace of it was on him. Oh, I don't believe the hell. You don't know the God that I serve then. Amen. I know what God can do. Amen. I've seen it time and time again. I believe in the miracle working power. Amen. He went, this, you, you look into the scripture. The ones he touched, <coughs> the ones he touched, he made a difference. He changed our life. Amen? Somebody says, oh, I don't think y'all ought to shout. Jesus never shouted in, in, when he, to, in church. He never got happy when he did. No, G, Jesus didn't, but the people he touched surely did. Amen? Amen? They went telling everybody. People tell, somebody to touch Jesus, I tell you. The lame went a jumping in a hat. You read it. The people he touched, he made a difference in their life. See, I'm telling you this morning, people don't have to live in a haunted house. I'm hurrying. My message is about done. You don't have to live bound up by sin. People think there ain't no hope. There is hope. There's no hopeless situations, only hopeless people. And the only reason they're hopeless is because they don't know the Lord. You get to knowing Jesus, you're going to find some hope this morning. You don't have to live bound up in sin. You don't have to live under the bondages. Sin cuts life short. It does. I believe that. Sin destroys life. Amen? Sin makes people miserable. Amen? Sin makes people mean. Amen. Sin's the result of it. We see the result of it. But there's a chain breaker. See, you can't break it on your own. You can't break the chain on your own. I can't break the chain for you. You see, the Bible says there's got to be one. There's a strong man that has people bound with chains. And there's got to be one stronger than the strong man. Amen. Who's the strong man? Satan. Who's stronger than the strong man? Christ went in his house and broke that chain. Can I tell you, Jesus is the chain breaker. You don't have to live in darkness when you can live in light. Amen. You don't have to live in darkness, but you can live in light. You don't have to be bent, live bound up, but you can be live, live set free. Amen. I'll tell you. 
I've been serving the Lord almost 18, 19 years, preaching almost 70. And I'll tell you right now, there ain't nothing that could get me to go back in my old lifestyle. I didn't lose nothing there. Only thing I lost was misery, pain, and heartache. But I have gained the glorious gospel. And I have obtained the freedom that Christ. And I've attained eternal life. Amen. You say, I don't have, if your name's written in the Lamb's book of life, can I tell you, you got a reason to rejoice. Amen. If your name ain't written in the Lamb's book of life, he's given an invitation this morning. Amen. I'll leave that between you and God. But you better make sure you know, you know, you know. Amen. Because it could, what if this would be your last day on this earth? I want to tell you, I've been in services like that, and it's happened. I have been in services like that. My former pastor was preaching revival in Gaston, North Carolina. The Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, somebody is going to enter into eternity. People just laughed at him, thought he's just making that up, making that up. Well, there was a young man who responded to that call that morning. That afternoon, he got hit on a railroad track somewhere, went into eternity. Thank God he responded. But I've been in services where I know they gripped the pew and said, we'll be back tonight to come and accept the Lord, but that night never come because they'd go into eternity. I'm telling you, it ain't a playground. It's a reality. It ain't a time to think. It's a time to make a decision. Amen. Jesus Christ is your answer. Jesus Christ is the solution. I don't know where everybody stands in here. You and God know that. That's the most important thing. God knows where you stand. God sees your heart. I can't see your heart. I know how the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaketh, and your actions speaketh. But listen, can I tell you today, you know where you stand. You know whether you're in bondage. You know whether you're living in darkness. Can I tell you he's come by to shine the light. He's come by to give you some good news that he's there with outstretched arms waiting till you respond. And everyone's standing in here this morning. Get ready to play. Can you play? I want you to play Amazing Grace this morning. Maybe this morning, as I give this altar call, play that. You don't have to live in bondage. You don't have to live in bondage this morning. Christ has come by to set you free. Is there one in here that says, I need to bond? I'm tired of living in darkness. I need the chains of sin broken in my life. He's here this morning. He's here this morning. He's here this morning. He's here this morning to break those chains. Maybe you ain't where you need to be with him. Don't you walk out of here. If you don't know him, if you don't know where you're going, you're only 90% sure. That means you're 99% sure you're 100% lost. I don't back off that statement. If your name ain't in the Lamb's Book of Life, it's time to get your name written in a book that matters. Is there one under my voice? That would say, Pastor, I need to know Jesus. I need to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Don't hold back. Step out and come up here this morning. Don't be ashamed. I feel he's dealing. I feel he's a dealing. Don't walk out. This could be the last opportunity you get. What if it is? Maybe this morning you say, I'm not where I need to stand with him. Well, it's time to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. Those that will this morning, if he's dealing with you, I want you up here. Come on up. Oh, hallelujah. Is there others? A man must be born again. You don't have to live in darkness, sin. The chain, he's broken it. He'll break that chain. Is there others that says, maybe I need to search my life. Maybe I just need to talk to him, make him where I'm standing, where I need to be. I want to invite those that will be in this altar this morning. Those that will, come on up. Seek the face of God. Seek the face of God this morning. The Lord's still on the throne this morning. Amen, amen. <laughs>